Hey guys, I'm out in Tennessee at CMRA. It's a private riding area on 17,000 acres. That is just huge. This is the parking lot. This is, you know, where you stage at. Right out of the back, we take a road and we're going to go hit the uh, Enduro Loop. That's the bronze level. I think he said with some gold in there. I'm not quite sure. Um, sorry for the voiceover, but the audio with the GoPro dongle was just bad. I, I, I couldn't use it. You'll hear it in a little bit, but yeah, it was unusable. So as you can see, it's very uh, overgrown. It's 17,000 acres. This is not one of their dedicated loops. They have a loop one, loop two, loop three. This is kind of touches on, I think, some of loop three later on, but most of this is just you go out and you find it and you ride it type of stuff. Like I said, they used this for the Enduro Loop is how the guy knew that was showing us around where to go pretty much, you know, using a GPS. You pretty much have to use a GPS. Here we all are. You can see it's somewhat of a big group. I left some of this in for sound just so you can see the standard and why I did not stock audio most of the time. The hill climbs are pretty steep. There's some water crossing. Not too many on where he took us, but there are, were some water crossings. We did ride in the creek bottom later on, and that was pretty gnarly because Tennessee Creek Rock is much different than out here in Colorado. It's slicker than can be. The Sedona MX907 HP tire does not hook up whatsoever in this terrain. It's horrible. And then, I've never seen this one. I've never been able to walk over here. And you can hear there was a flood. This That's is all the debris. Oh really? Then as you can see the single track overgrown like I said earlier. I mean pretty much you're kind of figuring it out and I wouldn't even say it's overgrown because it's not a a dedicated trail that everyone knows about and rides you can check the description for my gpx file and i guess go hit it i would hit it with other people though if you remember because it is pretty crazy this was just a neat little area you have neat areas like this that go through rocks and Kind of different terrain from time to time. I mean, again, it's a large piece of property, so there's a wide variety of terrain. But there's a lot of downs, which means there's a lot of uphills too. Like this is uphill, a lot of logs down. I didn't even add most of them. I didn't even find all my drops. I've had more drops. I, I did take of the hit the visor on the ground at one point. I couldn't find that fall, but yeah, I had a few drops. And typically, it was from the Sedona tire sliding out because it was just not hooking up. And anything on side hill, pretty much my tire would wash out. It was horrible. This was a steep hill climb. It was pretty uh, gnarly. I ended up doing a go around, as you will see. But, uh, you know, here we are hitting it. And me and the other guy ended up going around. Could I have probably got it? Probably. I don't think it was something so steep that I've never done here in Colorado. It's just the terrain with this tire was just horrible. And as I fall here, you can see the dirt. And it's just kind of muddy-ish clay. And it, I was sliding all around on that stuff. So this is the way we went around. We went back some. Uh, Dave, I believe, came down to kind of show us, hey, it's up here. Um, and we just had to make a trail going up. Um, a lot more grip because of the leave covered, you know, covering the dirt. So I don't know. It just had more grip. I just was like, hey, I'm blazing straight up. 
and then I'll figure it out at the top. I've done that here in Colorado before in unknown areas. Not typical, though, because you can't typically go off trails. Just if you get, you're stuck. The time I did, I was stuck in winter, so forgive me. <laughs> That's an old story, though. But just more riding this, you know, we're pretty much as a group. You're not going to be going too fast back here. So that was nice. We were pretty much able to stay together as a group. For the most part, there were, typically they, were, they didn't have to wait on me too much. Um, I did get a lot of help, and I do thank them greatly for that help in various areas, as you will see. So it was a great group to ride with, um, you know, willing to help out when needed uh, to just get through stuff. I mean, that's kind of sometimes how you have to do it. So that was nice to see. Eh, you know, another log, stuck on another log, and this is like going up. <laughs> it's like right at the top. Then we just had some fun areas like this. And again, uh, I kind of got messed up here. Uh, he stopped at the top and I kind of backed off. And that just totally messed me up. Guys turned around, got off, uh, helped me reposition the bike because I was kind of in a weird, awkward <laughs> spot. And took another run at it. It wasn't a big deal. And then, see, the, the tire just slid right out. And that's, I say, if I had good audio... These tires aren't hooking up. It just slid right out and, you know, into a tree. But, yeah, there was nonstop logs. And then here we we start uh, crossing a creek and riding down a creek. And that Tennessee creek rock, that stuff is slick. It's just, it's like ice in spots. I don't know why that is versus Colorado. Colorado, you get on rock and you have amazing traction. I mean, we are, I always like hitting the rock because it's just amazing. It's just, it's not that amazing there in Tennessee. Just totally different type of rock. So it's going to be hard for my audience that rides out west here to be like, oh my God, you're falling everywhere. But it's, it's just totally different. I'm not used to it. And definitely I am not good at this type of terrain at all. But in some ways, I'm better at this than my uh, Loop 2 video just because this is pretty much, you're riding wherever. So no one's trying to go race pace on this. You know, we're just trying to get through following a guy who's showing us where they ran the racers. As you can see, other people go down and whatnot. I mean, it happens. It's not just me. Or they get stuck. Again, it happens. It's not just me that gets stuck. You know, um, I was probably the least experienced. I mean, I think everyone else had been riding for quite a long time. Uh, one guy's fairly new, but he rides like four times a week. So, yeah, I miss those days. And I wasn't riding this type of stuff when I was riding four times a week. I was riding more dual sport orientated stuff. So, you know, my my single track skills aren't there like, like if I'm on the big bike, I know exactly what to do on Jeep roads and hard trails and, and that. Another hill climb, just gnarly hill climbs. I mean, this... This is just totally eroded away. I don't know if it was an old uh, logging road down, dozer road of some sort, or just natural erosion. But, yep, yeah, they ran us up it. <laughs> and I thought I could maybe get out. Nope, it was just too steep. So, you know, I had to bring the bike back down into the trench. And the guy in front of me is a really good rider. He's the guy that rides like four times a week. Every day, he was out there, like, every day he works late, a later shift, and, man, <laughs> dedication to come out, ride, and then go work. But you can see, he, he's pretty well 
stuck there. <laughs> you know? So I'm looking at, like, what am I going to do? Because I knew, kn knew if it was in Colorado, I could just probably hop right up this, like, little root thing with traction. <laughs> I had no traction. I mean, that's like solid clay that I'm on. And, you know, I'm trying to hop it up, you know, look, okay, what do I need to do? Push back, sit on the seat, and let's pop it. Nope, not, not working. Stay on the seat real stiff. Nope. He came down, so that's what I said. These guys were awesome at helping. Um, definitely a terrain, you need the tugger strap like I have. Definitely check them out. Tugger straps, are, they're well worth it. And uh, mine got a workout. <laughs> So just like another unique area with the rock formations and stuff, riding around the rock. It's just pretty interesting. It's cool stuff, you know. And for the most part, I had a lot of fun. I did get pretty wore out near the end and was getting a little agitated to myself. Didn't really express that out loud, but I was kind of like, okay, I just want this to be done. But looking back on the video and stuff, I had a lot of fun. I mean, it was just different terrain, different skills that I don't get to use riding in this type of terrain. As you saw, I went down on this hill. So another attempt, and man, those two trees right there, I didn't even notice the first time. That second time, I just did not have it. So as you can see, the third attempt was perfect. I got right up it. I was able to do it. Um, there was no go around in that, or at least easy go around in that area that I could just hit. So pretty much I had to do it. So third attempt, I did it. Uh, you know, I, I probably could have did that on one of the other hill climbs, but you know. It gets nerve-wracking <laughs> when it's a hill climb and just this clay. See, once again, bike kind of slides out. I, and at this point, I, I kind of expect it. But I'm also, it makes me be a lot more cautious. When I see a log or something, I, I become more paranoid because the tire is just sliding. And, you know, you start learning, like, well, I know it's going to slide, so why even bother? I mean, what's the, you know, what's the point of trying? So jump off and move move it around. Um, I probably should have let more air out this day. So, yes, you can fault me for not being proactive. And people said, well, hey, let more air out. And I was just like, ah, we're riding, we're riding. You know, I don't like to do it on the trail type thing. You know, I don't want to hold anyone up. We're riding. I don't want to, even if it takes a couple seconds. You know, when I did loop two, I was hooking up a lot better, but I had a lot, let a lot of air out of that rear tire to make that happen. Again, just another cool area, you know, by these rocks. This uh, single track, which they pretty much ran people along, if you can believe it, in the middle of the night. And this isn't even the gold or silver loops this is the bronze so imagine doing this at night looking at your gps and figuring out a way <laughs> we both went down that it was awesome he went down that way <laughs> and i went down you know right there and it's steep you can't i can't uh stress that enough a lot of this is steep i'm i'm going up s steep mountains you know, mountains is for Tennessee, not mountains like out west here. Oh, and Tyler, his skid plate kind of pulled off underneath his gas gas, so we had to fix that. That took a little bit of time. And then here he is. He's helping me out on a spot later on. Um, it's steep, but you can't tell that from the video too much. Just had to get up this moss-covered rock and... I was having a heck of a time. So, again, the guys were awesome. Really helped out. Of course, I had a hike up, and man, I hate hiking. 
and over. <laughs> yeah, that type of stuff can happen. And the tire decided to hook up for once and it went up and over. And, you know, of course I got wore out. This was getting closer to the end and I'm getting tired. You know, I'm not as refreshed. And so Tyler came down and he rode it up again, kind of learning curve with my bike with the whole recluse and the clake. He's a little heavier, so he was able to get a lot more traction on that back tire than I was able to. So he, he got it right up, plus a little bit better skills than I have. And, and he's taller, too. That always helps. That's always a bonus. But just another steep hill we're going up. And as you can see, we, we pretty much stay together a lot of the time. It's uh, in people wait. Because it's not a signed loop, you know, there, there is waiting to make sure we're all together because it's just 17,000 acres. You could end up anywhere if you're not too careful. And I'm getting close to my battery just ending. And, yeah, we had this kind of water area. I had to go around, fight with that branch. So, guys... It was an awesome time. It was a great time. CMRA land, 17,000 acres, is sweet. And definitely, if you live near this, you would definitely want to join. And, you know, you pretty much can ride anywhere. I mean, if you're really proactive, you could probably build more trails and sign them and stuff and and what have you. It's a, it's a great area. You don't see anyone because, A, membership, and B, just such a large piece of land and there's so much there to see and ride and yeah great time with awesome people very skilled riders and yeah i just had a blast doing this and i wish i had a lighter newer bike <laughs> the 2012 gas gas ec300 it was pretty much a pig that year although it was lighter than my xr650r it it is uh, heavier than most two-stroke bikes especially the newer ones so guys thanks for watching please like subscribe and check out my other videos have a good one